Anthony Hartwig here with a Poland boys basketball season preview and coaches corner with Eric Fender, the head coach of the Poland boys team, head on, heading off of a any championship season. Coach, thanks for coming on, talking to us, and and previewing the season for us. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate what you guys do for the sports and the community. So first, before we get into all the excitement of this year, let's just recap last year. You know, you had a great season, uh, especially inside the conference. Talk about some of the lessons that you think coaching staff and players could learn from last year, especially the returning players, of course, that are going to be bringing that experience into uh, this season. Well, I think you learn, you know, in the Northeast eight that every night it's going to be a competitive game. You've got to be ready. Uh, you got to be willing to uh, grind through the the long days. Um, you've got to be willing to push yourself to get better each and every day. Uh, and then, you know, you just got to take it one game at a time. Uh, and if you do that, you're going to set yourself up, hopefully, uh, for good things to come. So, you know, in that sense, we, we faced some adversity last year with some injuries. Uh, some guys who weren't necessarily expected to play as much, played a little bit more, especially towards the end of the season. Um, and I think that's going to help prepare us for this year. Now, when we talk about this year, we always start with a meet the team segment of the show. And uh, let's talk about it. Let's uh, shout out the roster, the names that we're going to be seeing on the floor this year for Poland. And I know there's a lot of returning faces and a lot of big stars that we know, but maybe some new faces that we need to get to know. Well, honestly, we're still working on our roster uh, with football still going uh, full go. We don't have a full roster yet, so we're waiting to see sort of how some of those guys come off of football and who's going to play, who's not. Uh, it's a long season for them. They get banged up uh, over the course of their time. Uh, guys we're expecting back, you know, you've got Carmine Tucolo, who's going to be a junior starting point guard for us last year. Uh, Jacob Hayes, Oliver McCauley, uh, two other starters returning for us. Uh, then you got guys down the line uh, returning letter winners, such as Michael Daly and Jay Stefanson. Uh, and then some new guys such as Anthony Delomo, Brady Kendall, uh, Nick Natoli, even as a sophomore, uh, we've got some high hopes for him. Um, and, and so we're just sort of right now grinding with the kids we have, uh, waiting for football. We wish them luck and want to continue to see them succeed. Uh, but we've got to try and get ready for the season. So we're, we're doing that with who we have, and uh, we'll be ready. Yeah, I know I know. with, with football, your roster might uh, have some changes when their season is over. But one kid you can talk about and that you're very excited to have back, of course, is Carmine Tucolo, who kind of – lit the conference and the area by storm last year as a sophomore. I know this is going to be a scary question for everyone that has to play you guys, but in what ways do you think Carmine has gotten better and, and has improved his game now as an upperclassman? Well, you know, once one of the big ways he's improved is he's now got, you know, a viewer of, um, you know, he just understands that he's, he's got a viewer experience. Um, he can score from all three levels. Uh, he's a willing defender nowadays. Um, and, you know, it's just being able to put him in the right places. Uh, but we've got other guys that can do that, and they're willing. And, and as long as teams, you know, as long as we can figure out how uh, our roles are going to be, you know, I think we'll be okay. Uh, but Carmine's definitely, you know, uh, he was first team all in Northeast State last year, had a variety of other accolades. I know I think he was the YSN uh, all-star pick for – uh, mm -hmm. Poland last year for the boys. Uh, you know, so as a junior, we just expect to continue to see his ceiling rise. Um, and we'll take it again, one game at a time. He sure was. And he lit up that all-star game, um, so well for, for Poland. When we talk about the league this year in the NE8, it was obviously a dog fight last year, uh, came down to the wire, you know, with you guys in South range. And there were other teams that were kind of nipping, like you said, there's always a competitive game in the NA. Let's talk about what it looks like this year, what you're expecting out of it, and and um, how you kind of see Poland shaping into it. Well, I think as any coach, you go in and, and you have high expectations, especially you know coming off a league championship. Um, you know, this year, sort of as any other year, you, you take it one game at a time. You don't really know right now a lot about what's going on. Um, some teams have had a full opportunity since November 1st to start. Uh, other teams have not. Um, you've got a, a team with some new coaches. I think there's four new coaches in the league. Um, you know, Coach Hannon out there and Gerard always does a nice job. He, job. He's the longest tenured coach in the Northeast State. Um, and then you've got some new guys. Uh, you've got DJ Aldish down at Strellers, who's got some players returning. Um, you've got a new one uh, over at Lakeview. Um, you know, so it's just sort of figuring those things out. Um, yeah, but we're excited. We're excited for the opportunity, for the competition. Um, and, you know, we just we will we'll go from there. When you get new coaches, inside, especially inside the conference, 
Um, how how much of a challenge is it to kind of, you know, when 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 the coaches have been there for a while, you know what they do, you know what their schemes are, you know what kind of basketball they like to play, and now especially for the first time going into those games, you're going to be kind of blind on what the coaches are doing with that program, what kind of style they like to play, et cetera, et cetera. What's it like to to kind of deal with that in a league where you're seeing, like you said, four new coaches this year? You know, I don't think it's any different in in what we do uh, personally uh, or what I do. Um, you know, my thing is, is we always try and give the kids uh, the best scouting report that we can. Uh, so we try and get as much film, go watch as many games uh, in person as we can, and then just sort of break it down. What are teams doing on the offensive end of the ball? What are teams doing on the defensive side of it? Uh, and, and just trying to get our kids to understand those concepts that the opposing teams are running. And then, you know, let's figure out how can we attack it both ways. And then uh, we talk about non-conference as well. You know, when, when you're playing non-conference, it's all about getting yourself ready for tournament time and, and learning what, what you guys are being good at and what you guys need to work on. So talk about non-conference and what teams pop up this year that you're excited to challenge yourself with and you know that it will get you ready for that tournament time. Yeah, no, we still we, we have uh, Canfield twice. Uh, we actually have them pretty early on in the season right now uh, at their place, which is always a tough place to play. And then they come to us towards the end of the season uh, for that battle of the 224 trophy. Uh, Boardman got a new coach. We get them at the end of the year. Uh, I've known Coach Flores for quite a while. He'll do a nice job over there. So that's always a, an exciting one. Um, we've got Salem who, who really pounded us last year. So, you know, to have the opportunity for them to come to our place and, and get a little revenge will, will, will be nice, you know, but we got to be ready to go for that. Uh, Howland right now, early in the season, uh, you know, coach Bubon does a great job for them. And, and it's just, you know, understanding the, the complexities of what he has and what he does out in Howland. He does a really nice job. So that's always a good challenge. Uh, and then one of the last ones, last two, actually, we've got Nishanik coming over from PA. Uh, for the Mahoning Valley United Way game, um, Coach Corey over there in the always does a great job. And, you know, to sort of round things off, we, we bring in Talmadge, um, or I'm sorry, Streetsboro uh, this year, Streetsboro. And, you know, they're well coached, uh, good team. Um, and they come in to us mid January. So it'll be a good test for us as well. Coach, you've already alluded to it how the football team's on the run and you have to wait for those guys. Now, talk about what kind of challenges that presents in the scrimmage season when you do still have to do scrimmages and you might have to do, you know, several of those without your guys, you know, that you know you're going to get from the football team. What's it like to kind of navigate the scrimmages and still try to get what you need out of it and uh, still be able to go out there and, and show maybe some guys that um, you might need, uh, you know, in varsity level, what it might be uh, in the scrimmage time? Yeah, I mean, really, some of the guys that we're getting from football, they've got experience. Uh, you know, some of the guys we got back already, uh, Jacob Hayes, Colin McBride, some of these other guys that played soccer. Michael Daly was the starting goalie. Uh, it, it's just getting them acclimated to basketball. Uh, you know, they're competitors. They've played in high-level games already. I mean, our soccer team went to the regional finals and, and had a great run in their season. Football's doing well. Uh, probably the hardest thing for us is, is the balancing between, you know, how much can we do and then how much rest can these guys or do they need you know football is going to come off they're going to get a few days and then we've got to start ramping up our stuff uh and it's unfortunate you know they're having a great season uh, uh we're letting them enjoy that uh but in the same sense too when they get back we got to hit the ground running um you know so it's that battle of what is enough for them on both sides but you know they they're competitors that's the thing i know from from you know experience being a Poland. Uh, and when the when the time comes for game number one, they're going to go out and compete. And win or lose, you're going to get their best effort, uh, and that's all we can ask for. And no matter what sport you're talking about in Poland, the the bar of excellence is really raised up, especially the last two years on the boys' side. You see baseball have the season they did last season. You saw you know what you guys did last year. Football is on a big playoff run. What's it like to be a part of an athletic stream right now as a head coach, watching all these athletes just have success and plenty of them being able to come into your locker room as well and, and share what it took and what kind of culture it took to get to that level of, of eliteness at the, at the, at the state tournament. Well, you know, it, it's, it's definitely exciting. You know, like I said, you've got soccer, you've got football that had great runs so far this year. Uh, we're hoping basketball continue it. Baseball did it, uh, you know, last season. Um, and the thing that I don't think people realize sometimes is, is Poland has gotten smaller. They're not your traditional uh, D2 school anymore. 
Um, we're now in basketball. We're now down to D5, the same as we are in football. Um, you know, so I think that gives us a, a great advantage at times. Um, but just to have these guys build success from one season to the next and, and get that experience, it, it's tremendous. And, you know, I think if for any coach at Poland, uh, it just goes back to supporting one another, to support my kids and, and to putting them into the best possible positions to, to be successful. We usually wouldn't talk about tournament time this early in the in the season preview, but because of the expansion, we just have to talk about what you think of you know the the expansion from four divisions to now seven in basketball. And like you just said, you're now division five in basketball. What kind of doors do you think that might open now that you're playing teams that are a little bit more comparable to what your size school is? Well, you know, it, it's a long season, Anthony, and and you know that. Um, I think a lot of it's just going to be, can we stay healthy? Uh, I think anytime you see a, a tournament team really starting to make a run, um, you're going to have guys that are healthy and teams that are hitting their stride right at the perfect time. Um, you know, so for us, it, it's just grinding through the season. Uh, it's putting ourselves in as many competitive situations as we can. Like I said, we've got a very tough non-conference schedule. Uh, some of the teams that are now in our D5 uh, district are teams that are in our league, you know, so we may see them now a third time. Uh, I know South Range, I know Girard, those are schools that we could easily match up against. So it, it's just sort of making sure that we're doing the things we need to uh, to put ourselves in the right position when tournament time comes to, to be feeling good about us. All right, Coach, we don't let these uh, interviews go without the chance to talk about the coaching staff because we know – they're behind you making this program as great as it is. So let's talk about the, the people that you've put in place from middle school on, on, on up to really build this Poland program and the guys that you wouldn't be able to, to make it what it is without. Yeah, you know, I'll start with my, my middle school coaches, uh, Adam Rudolph at the seventh grade level, Josh Bader at the eighth grade level. Uh, I was actually lucky enough, um, Josh found uh, Braden O'Shaughnessy, former Poland player, we had a lot of success, not only on the basketball court, but on the baseball diamond as well. Uh, Braden's going to come back and help Josh at our eighth grade level, be a volunteer there. Uh, and then, you know, going into freshman, we've got Luke Nord, who's been a freshman or, or middle school coach for us for quite a number of years. Uh, we were able to add Coach Anthony Fuller, who is currently on the football staff uh, as a volunteer there. Uh, and then our JV uh, coach is Coach Zach Kappen. Um, he's currently with the football program as well. I like having those football guys uh, come help us out uh, because it, it keeps that bond. It keeps that um, you know relationship in a multitude of sports. Uh, and then varsity assistant wise, we have Matt Baker, former uh, head coach over at Lakeview. He got a teaching job back at Poland. He's going to be my uh, varsity assistant coach. My brother, Chad Fender, uh, will be on the bench as well. And then you have myself. This is year number four I'm heading into uh, over at fourth year that that's probably feeling like a, a breeze for you when you look back um what keeps you coming back you know this is not your not fourth year of Poland but you've coached for so long in other places as well what keeps you coming back to basketball coming back to coaching at the high school level we know it's a long run we know it's a lot of stress on you it's a lot of time um what keeps you coming back to it well, I mean, you know, this is 18 years now, uh, splitting my time between uh, being the head coach at, at Springfield for uh, the early part of my career, going to be an assistant coach over at Boardman uh, with Coach Pat Birch uh, for about four years over there, and then coming back to Poland. This is uh, year number five, actually, at Poland, one year as an assistant. Uh, what keeps me coming back, honestly, is the kids uh, and the competitive uh, the competitiveness that, that basketball allows you to have. I think if you're a coach, uh, you know, you want to be a, a, your competitor um, and you love just working with the kids and the kids that I get to work with each and every day. Uh, they're some special kids. They're, they're great to come into, you know, coach basketball with. Uh, they love uh, the, the competition just like I do. Uh, but in the long run, honestly, um, and I think if, if you talk to any coach, you got to have the family support system at home. Uh, and that, uh, that goes to my wife. Uh, we have two kids that are, you know, growing up and getting older. Uh, so she helps take care of a lot of the things at home uh, and then and just family in general, just the, the opportunity. It's another opportunity for us to, to be around one another for, for my family, having my brother there. Uh, my dad's a former coach. So, you know, it's a family thing almost. Coach, we want to thank you so much for taking the time to preview the season. We appreciate it. Wish you the best of luck this year. And, you know, we'll be out there covering you guys. We can't wait to talk to you in real soon. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Anthony.